As humans, we see ourselves superior to animals. We've created an advanced society. In only a few centuries, we built skyscrapers, monuments, and most of us seem to be way more intelligent than the average monkey. But nonetheless, we often envy our pets when we feel stressed and worn out while they seem to be pretty chill all day. You know, you watch your dog joyfully run around in the park while you drown in thoughts and can't seem to enjoy the moment, always contemplating contemplating about future scenarios in your head. So is it really our lifestyle that keeps us in the grips of anxiety or are animals just wired differently? How do they seemingly manage to handle stress better than our advanced species we call humans? In theory, we should be able to handle these psychological challenges easily. I mean, we have the ability to think logically, we can self-reflect on our actions and we have self-awareness while some animals don't even recognize themselves in the mirror. So what's the deal why are we not happy all the time using these advanced tools of our mind or is it because we are misusing them that we create those problems for ourselves in the first place it's an interesting concept I thought about a lot and in this video I want to show you why animals are better at dealing with stress and why our stress response has gotten out of control for most people. My name is Fabrizio and I'm showing people how I got rid of anxiety after having suffered from it for five years. It's truly an amazing experience to finally live life to its full extent and I want you to show you how to achieve the same. So you should continue to watch if you want to hear about my learnings over the years and not having to go the painful route of trial and error just like I did. In my videos I want to give you the shortcuts, the cheat codes, the most effective and actionable tips so this can be soon your reality. I'm also coaching clients on this topic on how to get rid of anxiety and the first thing I tell them to explain how our minds work is the story of the lion and the gazelle. So imagine a gazelle in the African savanna peacefully drinking from a water hole. It's minding its own business until it hears a crackling from the bush nearby. A lion jumps out and starts chasing after the gazelle, which immediately starts running for its life. And after a short chase, the gazelle can outwit the lion. So it takes two turns, shakes off the predator, avoiding to be mauled to death, and it survives another day. So half an hour later, it's back drinking at another water hole as if nothing happened, and it's back to its natural state. So imagine if this happened to you. You'd be traumatized, you wouldn't eat therapy, you'd be crying in a corner. It's a stark contrast, maybe a bit over the top, but it illustrates perfectly how animals only turn on their stress response when it's necessary. So once they perceive a danger, their body is flooded with adrenaline and cortisol, the chemicals of stress which help them move into action. It activates the fight or flight response, helping them to survive in the face of danger. They can either fight or run away. So a rush of adrenaline sharpens their senses and lets them pay more attention on the environment around them which makes them ready to react so their body kicks into survival mode this is what allowed the gazelle in the story to run the extra 10 percent to push their body to extraordinary lengths giving it the edge over the line and eventually surviving you know after the danger was avoided there's no reason for the gazelle to stay in that mode their body starts relaxing and it goes back to drinking from the water hole or rejoining the herd so now if we look at humans we have the exact same response to danger. We perceive danger, we get into fight or fly mode, our body starts producing adrenaline and cortisol. So why is it that we seem to stay longer in those states of stress? Why do we have a hard time going back to normal? I can tell you the key to entering the problems is our ability to think. Thinking and all its consequential characteristics that emerge like logic, self-reflection and self-awareness are essential to our dominance as a species. It's what allowed us to progress to the top of the hierarchy. It's our most powerful tool, but a tool is only useful if you're not misusing it. Too many of us cannot deal with the power of the mind. It's like a toddler having command over nuclear weapons. So the main reason for this is we have never been explained how it really works. You see people around you going into depression, getting temper tantrums, shooting up schools or taking their own lives just because a chain of malicious thoughts led them to that state or that action. I think 
think I've never seen an animal kamikaze into a group of hares to kill them. That's not something that happens often or ever. Meanwhile, in the US, it's daily business. So going back to what differentiates us from animals is the ability to think, simply put. So here comes the issue. We can turn on our stress response by thought alone. It's enough to just think about the situation and your body will start feeling the emotion associated with it. That's because our body cannot differentiate between an inner and an outer experience. You might have heard me say that in other videos before, but it's a key element to understand why we act in certain ways. You can sit in your bed and think about a stressful situation, which triggers an emotion that is felt in your body. If it's fear or any close emotion, your body will get into fight or flight response, even though there's no danger nearby. But you've just told your body that your life might be in danger. Now, even worse, once you are in that state, your mind will produce more of the same thoughts leading to the same emotions because we want to use all our capabilities to escape that dangerous situation. Naturally, if you stay unconscious to this mechanism and let it run wild, you will trigger a vicious cycle that intensifies the feeling and keeps you for way longer than necessary in that state. So let's put this into an analogy. You should see your stress response mechanism like a nitro boost in a racing video game game, you can use it from time to time to get a short term advantage, but it will put strain on your car. Now imagine you got a cheat code that allows you to use this boost whenever you want. You will start overusing it and at some point your car will break down. So it's the same for our stress response. If you trigger it too often, you will break down too. So now how do you keep that response in check? How do we get back to that natural state after going through lots of stress? And how do we prevent ourselves from triggering this response on autopilot. So I got two approaches that I want to show you today. Number one is signal your body you're safe. Only when your body receives certain signs that there is no more danger, it will return to its natural state. Now, if you don't know them, you will subconsciously adapt them as habits and therefore signal your body signs of stress on autopilot. So one of the most important habits is your breathing. Most people breathe shallowly from their chest, which tells your body it's not time to relax, but prepare for battle. So it's the same mode of briefing we're in when we need to fight or run away. So instead, if you breathe deeply from your diaphragm, your body starts realizing that you're safe and it can relax as well. The difficulty is getting aware of your breathing patterns and actively check in with you during the day to remodel that habit to breathe more deeply and relaxed. The same comes for our next habit, which is tensing up your muscles, especially your shoulders or your jaw. That's where we tend to tense up during the day. So if you relax them, you're again sending the signal that there is no reason to tense up or your body. It's the same for posture. If you're sitting in your office chair hunched over all day, then that's not sending a positive signal. Something has to be wrong. You know, instead, imagine a confident person, shoulders back, chest out, chin up, and you'll find yourself feeling more confident when embracing this. So those tips are like magic tricks because just switching up a few habits in your daily life can have a significant impact on your overall mood and your stress response. So number two, shorten the period of emotional reaction. We tend to stay in emotional states way longer than we should because we're reiterating the same thoughts over and over leading to the same emotions and eventually the same reactions. We need to break the chain of continuous thinking and the best way to do that is by becoming aware what's happening. So when you're angry, sad or anxious, focus on your breathing which makes you focus on the present moment. Animals live only in the present moment because in their mind the concepts of past and future don't really exist. It's how they go back to normal so fast. This is how you starve the emotion because there's no more food in the form of same thoughts. So practice to stop thinking and get present just like animals. And you will notice in five to 10 minutes, your emotional reaction will ease off and you will be back to normal. So as I said, this will take some practice and there's better and worse ways to do this. So that's why I'm showing my clients how to most effectively go through this routine when they're in the middle of an emotional episode. So if you're interested to work with me personally and get rid of that always on stress response fast, hit me up and I'd be happy to 
help you out. You know, I've done it for all my clients and sometimes I'm even impressed how fast they turn around their life just because of a few small but effective changes in their lifestyle. And if you want to continue to try it yourself, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm planning to drop more videos on showing you how I got rid of anxiety so you can implement my proven methods on your own. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care and see you next time. Bye bye.